Rich and I recently divorced hey, Jenna. and kind of figuring out this new way of life. I was married for 23 years and with that person for three years prior. So for a total of 26 years of my life, I have been out of the game of dating, making friends, going out. That was my breaking point and I left it all, like left it all. And I'm not you a are. person that, because last year my ex used every single holiday, even if it was my holiday to be with my kids, to yeah. isolate me, manipulate oh, them, to torment me and everything he oh, could with God. South Carolina. In the land of you cannot make this ish up, 47 year old mother, married for 23 years with kids, divorces her husband for a happy life and instantly regrets it. It's so crazy watching all of these post wall women that are exposed to all this media think that their lives will be better once separated from their husbands. And then they upload crying videos to the internet talking about how much that they've lost. Without further ado. It's Jenna, recently divorced hey, Jenna. and kind of figuring out this new way of life. I was married for 23 years and with that person for three years prior. So for a total of 26 years of my life, I have been out of the game of dating, making friends, going out um, and stuff like that as a single woman in her 40s. Yeah, I'm 47. So I've raised children. My children are adult children now. And um, it's kind of interesting because it's so lonely at this stage in life, life after divorce, especially with older children. Could you make all your friends when they're younger, or at least I did. I met my friends mostly through my kids' activities. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I took them to practices. I went to school, all that stuff. Before she continues, I wanted to call this out. She's 47, but if you notice, her skin, at least on her face, does not look 47 at all. So this tells to me, and especially when you look at the arches in her eyebrows, that she's gotten work done. At the utmost least, she's gotten a facelift. So you can infer from that that the business of her marriage was particularly successful because the family is well off. You can also infer from that that this leaving of her husband was a degree of plan. Hey, baby, let me get a facelift. Meanwhile, she's thinking in the back of her mind, <laughs> when I get back on the market, I can look 15 years younger, thereby increasing my options. Don't believe me about the facelift? Watch her damn hands. She has baseball gloves attached to her wrists. It's crazy how now in 2023, their hands are their windows to their soul, no longer their eyes. This chick needs a damn palm lift. Let's proceed. Um, during my marriage, my weight went up and down. Um, my looks fluctuated depending on health needs or what a mental state I was in because of the abuse I was dealing with. And, no, and also just- Hold up, I also noticed how they also call out abuse and shit like that. Modern women like this will throw out the word abuse like they really don't understand what the word abuse actually is. Just having children and being exhausted, literally doing everything. So as your children get older and as you go through changes in life like divorce or anything like that, your looks will tend to change. Mine have obviously changed. Violins all, all out, please. Actually a lot. Um, I have an autoimmune disease, so I did not have control over my weight for many years. And once they got my medications under control, and then I got out of my toxic environment. Oh, and honestly, I find refuge in the gym. I live in the gym. I have always been an athlete. I have always loved to work out. So this is not anything new. It's nothing is going to change in like six months when I'm healed. I will always be a gym rat. Um, but it's interesting because I found that, you know, with this new day and age, um, I've kind of got into TikToks and all that stuff um, and social media. I'm a photographer. Like, that's part of my job. I'm a visual communications major back in the day. Everything I do is visual. And so this was like something I could grasp to. I could feel. I could see, touch, all that stuff. I've said a million times how I don't um, connect online. Notice how she talks about her children like they are a burden. Meanwhile, at the same junction, trying to look like a kid complaining about all the things she had to do as a mother. Meanwhile, your husband got up each and every day to afford the lifestyle of you as well as your children, including affording the Botox that now adorns your face. But I can see it now, just as she said, she just gotten into TikTok, doom scrolling all day, looking at pictures of visualizations of a life that in her mind, she left behind. Just through text and all that stuff. So it's interesting to me, 
um, some things and I wanted to bring everybody's attention that I have recently come across and heard a ton. Um, I have had so many people message, comment. I've even had people in my like personal life say, you look expensive or, you know, you're really pretty. So you probably, you know, I don't understand why you would complain about that. Like, like pretty girls can't have problems or pretty girls can't, um, feel sad about anything. Lots of girls get this. They just, the guy just wants to get that girl's attention. Someone they've seen on social media for whatever reason. She's a girl in their town they know. They, she has the looks that she wants. You know, whatever the reason is. But they really don't want anything with that girl. They just want the ego boost. The attention for that moment and all that stuff. Um, and then they move on. And so I've had this happen several times. And um, I've said to my girlfriends in close confidence. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. But guys, do me a favor. Go back and watch this entire video, close your eyes. What age do you think that she is? I mean, we already know that she's 47 because she said that she's 47. But let's say you didn't know that. How old would you guess? The biological age of almost 50, but speaks like she's only 20 years old. What am I doing wrong? And they're like, they're, you're not doing anything. They, they knew immediately that you were out of their league. They just wanted you to be the toy. They wanted to, you know, get you and and play with this shiny toy that they thought was so pretty or they thought had all these attributes that they wanted, um, but they knew they couldn't keep you because they couldn't, you know, you're out of their league. And what she's talking about here is the modern woman echo chamber that never seeks to hold them accountable. Like, no, it had nothing to do with that you're 47 and divorced with three kids. No, it has nothing to do with the way you articulate yourself like a baby woman child. It's all about the guys and how it's their fault and how you are the prize. The false advertising given to modern women today set their lives up for complete and utter unhappiness. But let's go into the future and see how the newly divorcee is handling life's obstacles. I don't know, I'm in a different stage today. Honestly, I literally have been having a great week, amazing week. And then all of a sudden today, my emotions I had the craziest thoughts and I wonder, does anybody else feel this way? Like, I feel like I'm in mourning of the life I thought that I was gonna have. And I'm kind of pissed at myself. I stayed in a marriage for 23 years and built up a family and my ex's career and everything. And we literally just got to where it was supposed to be everything we dreamed of. like owned a company and you left making, it you know almost a million dollars and that was my breaking point and i left it all like left it all and i'm not You're a right. person that is about money i've kind of been in mourning of the like oh my gosh like i gave it all up everything was around my family so when i chose to leave i gave it all up like all up <laughs> the, the joy of the men across the world as they watch the regret demon seep into her damn head. You destroyed your own family. No one feels sorry for you, ma'am. Nobody. I had no clue that the worst was yet to come in the one year of separation. And so it's weird because I find that I just thought today for a split second and I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I thought... I should have just stayed. I should have stayed. It wasn't that bad. Like, you made it 23 years. You made 26 years total. Your kids are like college and, and you left almost it. out of high school. Like, you made it. You made it. Like, it didn't matter at this point. They can do their own separate life and all that. You made it to the point where you guys were making so much money and you had big houses and you could do and whatever it wasn't you want. Good enough. You could relax. And. I literally just called my friend and I was like freaking out. Cause like, I'm my biggest, I'm the biggest person that keeps me back. Yes. Like I'm terrified. I don't have 401k. My counsel did not have my back. I was so traumatized when I got out. And she jumped off a cliff with no parachute. parachute!
It's crazy how she keeps saying things like, I made it, I made it. But the fantasies of a hot girl summer inflicted within your mind. I was so traumatized when I got out and then terrorized for the next year. Your word choice is hilarious. Terrorized, traumatized. I'm more apt to save that vernacular for soldiers of war. But instead, your entitled ass uses it to describe a 26 year long marriage. How narcissistic are you? Selfish woman. And then terrorized for the next year that I couldn't even think straight to help the people that wanted to help me and the people I entrusted to help me didn't help me and there's just timelines that you can't stop and so it is what it is and you know I'm 47 years old and it's not like I'm 25 I'm healthy kind of I have an autoimmune disease which means it's life-threatening for the rest of my life you know things can change but it's not like I'm an invalid and can't do anything for myself but it is terrifying like that wall should be I terrifying. I stayed. Oh. I'm so mad that I think this way. Give me them tears, I baby. I could have stayed. My life would have been so much easier. Sweet, delicious tears. I could have just gone and done whatever I wanted. Oh. I mean, I say that, and then I think as I say Bathing that, like, my soul. but you couldn't. It's like so weird that my brain thinks that way. And I called my girlfriend and I told her, I was like, I probably should have just stayed. I should have just stayed. It wasn't that bad. And she just started, she's like, Jenna, what are you talking about? Like, literally. And then I just keep thinking, I'm like, but I had a huge house and all my bills were paid for and I never had to think how they were going to get paid. My grass was cut, well, not the last year of separation. But you know what I mean? All the basic things to keep the image up. And I gave up my entire image that I was trained to have for my family for 23 years like I was the stay-at-home mom and I made the image of we were the perfect family I have beautiful children they were dressed right they you know did top sports like cheer and football and went to all that stuff and I was you know the cheer mom and you know did all that stuff and then did photography on the side just to make money to make ends meet so like a happy life career up. and I stayed long enough to just give it all up but you're a moron like, right there and i'm so mad at myself because i'm not this way i don't think this way but it is hard to be a single female when you're 47 when your kids Duh. are out it's not like i have little kids i always say if i had little kids this would be not even a question single women look at your former lifestyle and wish that they had it while you looked at their single lifestyle and wish that you had that Funny how that works. Women generally score way higher on neuroticism, which is the tendency to look at situations a lot more negatively. And it's so crazy because we can watch their neuroticism play out in videos just like these. And then they wonder why women divorce men way often than men divorce women. Because that instinct comes in. I have to, my kids, you know, I got little kids. I got to get them up for school. I got to get them to here. I got to get them to there. I got to go to work. I got to do that. I don't have that. I'm literally at home. The worst time of my day is after the gym at night when the house is quiet and silent and I just am in my thoughts. And it's so, so hard. Like, I'm my own boss. If I don't go to work, if I get sick, nothing happens. And my general Murphy photography would just crumble. And I love what I do. I have a passion for it. I love it. What an amazing life you have. But I'm in my head. Like, I'm literally in my head. And I'm booking shoots and I'm doing amazing. I'm so excited. But every time I think future and long run, I freak out because my future was right there. Like it was solidified. Like I was comfortable for the rest of my life. Maybe not mentally in my relationship, but financially I was fine. And I gave it all up to be happy. Happy. This doesn't look like happiness. Stayed. It was like stable in every other area but that like is my mental health really that important and then my friends remind me they're like yes like yes like you're just in that crazy wow. in between stage what friends you have and i'm trying to work through it i'm trying to work through the process uh, we've convinced modern women today that they can have literally everything that life must be perfect or you must leave that you can't wade through the water and to allow the emotionality of the situation to overwhelm you to thinking that the grass is always greener on the other side. But it's terrifying. It's terrifying to start over at 47. But it's hard to know you gave away. My ex will probably never make less than a million dollars every year. And I'm starting over.
it's terrifying. It's terrifying to get married to a woman with the emotional instability that you're demonstrating right here. Sounds like he had a master lawyer. This is a lawyer. He's a master. But imagine how he feels right now where he builds himself up to the value of commanding a million dollars a year. And then you say, bump it. I'm out of here. And basically as if I'm a 20 year old again. That's what and you want. It just doesn't seem fair. <sighs> trying to survive this year. I'm gonna be honest, the random things that trigger me are the craziest things. I'm sitting in my car, literally sitting in my car, trying to pull myself together because I did what any mom does and I pulled an emergency drive to my daughter because she needed to do something and drove an hour because she's at college to drop something off and was just so thankful that like I could do it for her and fit her in my schedule and the littlest thing she said just triggered me and this is the second time in a week that my child has triggered me without even meaning to. So we're getting ready to leave and she's like, well, I'll be home because we're, I'm gonna be at the Clemson Notre Dame game because dad's gonna take us all. You think that's nothing, right? Like nothing, right? And it instantly, like she instantly saw a switch in me and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. Cause you know, I don't talk about that stuff. I don't want her to worry. She's like, mom, what's wrong? I was like, nothing. And I had to keep it together. Cause last week she said randomly, I was like, what are we gonna do for Thanksgiving? This is my year to have Thanksgiving with you guys. What do you guys wanna do? You wanna volunteer? Do you want me to just cook at home? Do you wanna go out to eat? Like I'm literally like begging for them to give me any feedback because last year my ex used every single holiday, even if it was my holiday to be with my kids, to yeah. isolate me, manipulate oh, them, fault. to torment me and everything he oh, could with God. the South Carolina one year of separation law. And my lawyer did nothing to help me and the victim. laws did nothing to help You're me forever a and victim. my children were used as weapons so last week you chose to leave oh the lack of accountability is mind-boggling you left you left the life this is what happens when you surround yourself with enablers you just can't see the forest beyond the trees you left she says oh well dad said for christmas we're gonna go to gatlinburg and be there for the holidays and do Dollywood. So Virginia? That man never once ever went to Gatlinburg or Dollywood ever in his entire life before he met me. That was where my family always went. That is, I'm from Tennessee. That's something we always did. It was a bonding thing. And now that's what he's trying to do. It's like he's taken every single tradition I've ever done and now turned it into his. Everything I've ever done. And the worst part and the thing that triggers me is that I'm screwed. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. There's no way to lie about it. Like, I literally was screwed. Now I find myself triggered because during the hardest time of my year last year, of me literally trying to stay alive, me dealing with all the craziness of my ex, the lying, the alienation, him calling me a whore, him having my children call me a whore. Why? Not because I did anything bad, because I wore spaghetti straps and all that. And his only way, the only way that he could use my children against me was to say I was on social media. And I, in some ways I'm not even helping myself because my brain is so stressed. I'm just trying to like, don't don't keep dwelling on it. I keep telling myself, don't dwell on it. Just survive right now. Just get through it. Just get through the holidays. Shh. But there's a timeline. And if I don't do stuff by February 8th, I can never fix the situation. You know, what? what's the uh, what's the equivalent to calling men Peter Pan? So, like, women oftentimes will call men Peter Pans if they say that they haven't grown up. What's the women equivalent of that? <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> is that you're a baby woman child and you haven't grown up at all and your ex-husband is calling you out on your behavior while trying to escape the pasture but if i don't survive now i'm literally going to be a complete mess mentally so i'm trying like this is like crazy medium and i'm trying to be happy and and show my kids that like life can move on but the triggers, the random fucking triggers that had me sitting in a quick trip parking lot trying not to cry. Why? Because my ex 
has so much money. He makes more than $18,000 a month easily, or at least he did. He made almost a million dollars the year before we divorced and then lied about it. He has all the money at his fingertips to do whatever he wants, buy my children, take them on trips, take them on vacations. Why well, literally have the bare minimum to pay my bills on top of trying to restart a career because it was a hobby because I was a stay at home mom. And just like he said, I wasn't part of the equation. I was not part of the equation the entire marriage, this man told me. My role in life was to be the mother of his children and to um, do anything that was needed for the family while he built his career. I was not part of the equation. So how was that marriage ever supposed to survive? When I was fully 100% in trying to make a marriage, a life, a family, and this man never included me in the equation. And then when it was done and I got loose, and I tried to survive, that man had been plotting for over a year on how to make my life hell because he had all the money, all the control. And now I sit here with the triggers, a fucking trigger because he's going to the Clemson Notre Dame game with my kids. I can't just randomly for that. Hell, I can't even get them all in the same room at the same time. Cause they don't like so you. So I sit here and I'm gonna get through this trigger and I'm sucking up buttercup and I'll move on, but it's oh. not fair. Like, it's not fair, I'm pissed. It's just not fair, and I don't understand how. You made the decision. Now, you are free and clear to make any choice that you want within your life. That terrible year that you had, that was you discovering the wall. Watching all of that media and those TikToks of those young girls, and you probably watched Videos just like this of women talking about how better that their lives were after divorce. And you thought that'd be a component of your reality. Now you're sitting in a car talking about divorce triggers when your children are doing activities without you. Making yourself into a victim, complaining about the amazing life that you've previously had, taking no accountability, and for what? To be 47 years old, broke, and unhappy. You made your bed, ma'am. So you must lie in it. Questions, comments, concerns? Y'all already know what to do with me. Go to Toros and Reviews at gmail.com. Shout out to the internet. <laughs> Once again, it's absolutely insane that we can look at the chronology of an instant regret. You understand what I'm saying? So you guys already know when they pop up on the timeline, we must go through it. Until next time, YouTube.